All right, guys, today we're going to look at a couple of effects in Final Cut Pro to glitch our titles. So let's go and create a new project. And then I'm going to just call this glitch and I'm going to use a 30 frames per second sequence. Uh, you can use whatever you want here. And what I'm going to do is to bring in my intro clip. This is just five seconds long. Um, and then what I also want to do is go into titles and then select basic title. It's in bumper and opener. Bring that here. And then make sure it's the same length as your clip, which is around about five seconds for me. Okay, so what I want to do is to go into the text and change the, or rather double click on the title and change the text around. So creating a glitch title. And we are going to change the font to Coco Goose just to, uh, this is all up to your own interpretation, but I just like this font quite a bit. Uh, let's do that and then I'm going to change that to light. Then I'm also just going to move it over to the side and perhaps scale it up if it needs yeah, a little bit of a scale. So we'll do that. And then I'll also just make sure that the model here in the video doesn't interact with the title. No, that's good as well. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do is, like I said, arrange a couple of these effects that once we uh, arrange them together, create quite an effective title in the end. The first effect we're going to use is called Bad TV. And what I'm going to use Bad TV to do is to uh, create the Y position animation that we need. And you'll see that it first starts off at 25, which is perfect. And you can already see there's a bit of RGB uh, channel blurring happening here, which we're also actually going to add with another effect later. So we're going to start it off at 25. Then I'm going to make sure that it's keyframed at the start at frame zero. Then go ahead maybe to frame 10 maybe. Yeah, let's go to frame 10 and I'll make another keyframe at 25. And then at frame 18, I'll make it 100. Over there, it's going to go a bit crazy. And then we'll finish this off at about frame 30 or something like that. It just really doesn't matter all that much. Okay, now the next thing we're going to animate on Bad TV is the roll, and uh, the roll is what animates the Y position. So what I want to do is have it go all the way to the top, and then even over a little bit over here. It can it can go in there because we're going to be masking that out later. So we'll start it off at there. Then I'm just going to use my arrow key to um, uh, to move one frame ahead. So we'll have it go just slightly, even less than that. In fact, come on, give me give me what I need, yeah. And go a little bit more and so the whole point of this is for it to be rough so you can see it makes absolutely no linear sense but that is part of what makes this look quite cool and then down here so here it's going crazy so maybe like a little bit erratic And then I've pushed forward a couple frames for it to be zero. So this is kind of what it looks like now. And uh, that's all we need on bad TV. So the next effect we're going to use is scrape. And what scrape does, as you can see from the image here, is that it pulls the pixels on the edges towards a certain angle. So we'll drag that and drop it on there. Uh, I'm going to use uh, scrape. I'm going to use scrape so that it pulls the pixels upwards and so for that I don't actually need rotation here or do I? Yeah, no, I don't. So it's just a plain zero rotation and uh, what I also want to make sure is that it doesn't start just at the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to move the center off here. Okay, so we've got, we can start keyframing in and about here. So it's off screen and then move the center down slightly. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Move it over there. So you can see we're starting to get the effect. And then I'm also going to keyframe over here a little bit more. And then at this point, I'm also going to make sure it's animated the keyframe before. So frame five and then frame six. I want it to just be like slightly glitched there. So not quite 40, but also not as low as 30. So 35, 37, 36. So it's kind of looked like it, it's ghosting in over there, but that's all we need. Then make sure 
by the end that it is off screen I'll move the center right up and then I'll also change the amount to zero so that's all we need from scrape the next effect we've got is funhouse and this effect we're actually going to be using twice uh, and like scrape it uh, distorts the text at a certain direction so let's bring this in so you can see what it's doing there, stretching it out from the center point uh, on the x-axis. And because that's because the angle's at zero, and that's fine, that's what we'll do with the first one. So what I want to first do is to also again, obviously move it off just so I can see what's happening. And so the title comes in there. In fact, this is where we want to start, I would imagine. So let's have a small amount first to begin with, which looks kind of nice at the previous frame it can actually be full that doesn't look too bad in fact let's just make that two just to give it a little subtle bit and then sorry i pressed space bar accidentally there uh, let's go back to the beginning and then at zero have it zero at zero at frame zero on amounts okay so let's go to the last keyframe which is 4.59 at frame three and what i want to do is to make sure that this moves a little bit on the center so at frame three let's keyframe the center then the next frame let's go or rather let's go two frames ahead to frame five and then enlarge this a little bit and move the center slightly off like that and then even more like that but also it's a bit heavy now so i'm going to lower it down and we're at frame six let's go to frame eight and move this over here and then also just lower that about there maybe even less than that seven let's try or even four that doesn't look too bad and then we'll go forward to frame 11 and make sure that that is on zero all right like i said we're going to add this twice so let's put it on again this time of course though we're going to change the angle to 90 so that it is animating on or rather stretching on the y-axis along the y. I think I'm saying that correctly I might be wrong okay so let's get that coming in here and I'm going to make sure that the amount starts at naught and then over here is where I want to bring it in so I'll first of all let me go to the previous frame uh, keyframe that in next frame bring this down here and over here, what I'm going to do is have the amount come up a little bit. So there we go. That looks kind of cool. And the next next frame, let's go ahead. Let's also just move this up with it. But it's only going to be like a, a little bit in comparison to the previous frame. If I can get that right. That's okay. What we'll do is just make this a bit smaller. That's nice. And then the next frame, also a little bit higher also quite subtle sort of subtle and a little bit there and then that's it so the previous frame a month 10 and then the next frame zero so that's it for funhouse the last thing of the sort of distortion effect that i'm going to add to it is prism and all that really is is a rgb channel blur kind of similar to what we used with the first effect with bad tv but this is all that prism does is just to change rgb and so what we can do, uh, you can see it's on quite a lot there, so we don't want that. Let's go ahead and find a point where in fact here's a nice point. So start zero at frame six, then we'll bump it up quite a bit there. And then two frames ahead, it'll go back to zero. And then maybe at the end of here, let's go uh, frame 12. And then the next frame, it'll go up. And then two frames ahead, or even three, and then it's back to zero again. So there we go. So the last thing that we want to do, you'll see, remember that we started it off at this, the bottom of the screen here. That was just because sometimes the titles overlap from here to there. You might have it on your end. It doesn't seem to be happening with mine, but we will get rid of that using a draw mask. So just type draw mask into the effects browser. I'll bring that on and I'm going to just draw my mask here like this. Then I'll click on those points and drag it lower so that it works, so that it masks the bottom parts out. And I'm also just going to go invert mask. And I'm going to skip a couple frames ahead so that once it's over here, I can actually keyframe 100 and then the next frame is zero. So that just in case it gets into the mask, you see it almost did there, but I don't think it does touch. But if it does go over this point again, then, then it doesn't mask it out. 
So now let's play that back. All right guys, so as you can see, quite an effective title that we've managed to create in the end there in just a couple minutes. So what you might wanna do is then to glitch transition into your next scene. So we're gonna do that now by selecting both of these, the title and the video clip and creating a new compound clip. I'll just call that intro. And we'll just see how that plays. And we are going to have it sort of animate out at around two minutes and five frames Oh, sorry, two seconds with five frames on the end of it. I'll go back here. I'll find this extra clip that I want to transition into. And now remember with transitions, you always have to drag it back by a certain amount of frames. And the reason for that is so that the transition has the breathing room to create the transition from the previous uh, shot. And then what you're going to need to do is download the sample pack for the FCP glitch transitions. I'll have the link to that in the description for you to download. This is completely free. And then once it's installed, just go into your transitions, FCP glitch transition sample pack, and we are going to be using 26 here. And the sample pack also comes with some sound effects, so I'm going to just bring that in over here. I'll just quickly add some sound effects off screen to the first part, and this is our final product. <laughs> All right, guys, so I hope you find some value in this video. If you like short Final Cut Pro tips like this, then make sure you subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one.